Today's show is pre recorded. I sure will. Uh, good morning, everybody. You're listening to The Voice. Uh, come on, dig me now. One and only Steve Harvey. Man, oh man, got a radio show. Yep, trying to make it work, too. I'm not trying. I'm, 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 I'm getting it. I'm getting it done to the best of my abilities. Now, something funny my father taught me. He said, son, when you've done all you can do, if you've done your absolute best, and you look up, and it didn't get the job done, take a deep breath and do some more. (laughs) That used to bug me, man, when my father used to tell me, that. he said, son, when you've done your absolute best and you think you can't do no more, you've done all you can, and it still don't get the job done, take yourself a deep breath and do some more. And you know what? I found that has worked every single time. Every single time. Because what my father knew was that what you think is your breaking point or what you think is your all in all, he says, son, it's just something about it, man. If you just gather yourself, you got a little bit more. Everybody got some more. And, I, you know, I, I got to be honest with you, it has worked. It has helped me greatly. And, um, you know, it. everybody does have some more. You know, I tell that to my sons all the time. Dad I did my best. Well, let me ask you something else. Could you have done anything else? Could you have studied a little harder? Could you have shown up a little bit earlier? Could you stayed a little bit later? Yeah. Well, then, okay, that's what you should have done then. See, there's always a way. But if you're going to create excuses, if you're going to make them up all the time about why you don't get it done, I have a very, very sad uh, 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 statement for you right now. You're never going to get anything done. You're never going to get to the top. Not to the top. You can get halfway up. Now, you can get a third of the way up. You can get three quarters of the way up. But if you don't have that little extra reserve in you, you're not getting to the top. The top is only reserved for those that have the wherewithal and the power, the desire, the drive, and the gut-wrenching effort to get to the top. The top is reserved only for the top. It's just the top. There ain't but one top. The middle done ain't it. You know, the top, the top of the mountain, 
Halfway, it's a different view at the top. Things look different from up top. So if you want to get to the top of whatever, your profession, your field, your career, whatever it is, you got to do extra. You have to do more. More is expected of you. More, but here's what's really crazy. More is required of you. Don't live your life in a lackadaisical state. Don't wake up every day with the feeling of, uh, well, you know, whatever happens, happens. No, man, have a say-so in your life. You, first of all, let me ask you something. Who has God? Name the person that that God has given authority over you. Name the person. But who is the person? Nobody has domain over you. God didn't create that person. So what you sitting here for, man? What are you sitting here for? Letting people who do not know direct your path. Why are you worried about all these people with what they got to say about you and all these people with what they got to think about you when here's the news flash? They don't know either. All these people that you overly concerned about, all these people that you go into these answers for, they need answers too. Stop. What are you doing here? Gather yourself for a minute. Here is a solution to all of that. You have one source that will be there for you to the end of time, and that is your relationship with God. That is the one thing that's solid and for sure. He's behind the wall. He's in your jail cell. He rides with you in the police car. He's with you on your job up at the school. He's down there in the board meetings with you. He goes with you when you travel on planes. He sits with you when you're in a relationship. He helps you with your parenting skills. He helps you. He's there to assist you. He show If you do the right things, he show you and guide you to your next job. When you lose your job and you think it's a wrap, all, there's some good behind it, man. God is always working on your behalf to those that believe. You just got to believe. He don't ask you for nothing else. Believe in me. That's all he asks you to do. What you tripping for, man? And then when you make the decision to believe in him and it comes out your mouth from time to time somewhere, what you worried about what people say? What you worried about what they think for? Why? Who are they? They need God too. You 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 telling them you found something new that you're going to give this a shot right here. Now they got some yin, yin yang and some yakety yak to say about that. When they need God, too. That's what amazes me, man, about people. Sit up in here, man, be knocking your dream and stuff. Look, if you're an atheist, man, do your thing. Do your thing. But you can't create no laws where I can't do mine. That don't make no sense, man. That makes no sense at all to me. You have the right to go be whatever you want to be. You know, if you don't you don't like the fact that I'm in school, got my head bowed down, and I'm saying a prayer before I take this test, just don't bow your head, don't you pray. But if some kids want to get to that, that's some crazy mess. That's what happened in our schools. We took prayer out of schools, now look at our schools. You send your child to school and 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 someone else comes back home. That's a whole nother thing right here. That, that, that's not what I want to talk to you about. But I was just throwing it out because, you know, Hey, man, your relationship with God is essential to your success as a person. It's essential to your existence. It's essential to where you're trying to go and what you're trying to be because he made you. Why would you not talk to the person that made you to find out what he created you for? I ain't talking about your parents. Who made your parents? This is God. We created in his image. Why would you not talk to your maker to see why you got made? That, 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 don't, that don't make sense to you? If you're sitting and gotten yourself in a situation, you sitting in a jail cell somewhere, you locked up, you doing some time, man, be a good time for you to reflect. But whatever your situation is, man, God can get you through it. He can give you the strength, the courage, the wherewithal, the understanding, everything you need, the wisdom to get you through anything you're going through. You just got to touch base with him. I need God. Every single day of my life. And what he's done for me, man, off the chain. But guess what? He'll do the same thing for you.
You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Ladies and gentlemen, it is about to begin the Steve Harvey Morning Show. I have selected a song for you this morning that I that I have just decided to just uh uh blurt it out. I don't love you anymore. <laughs> Oh, it's, it's just as simple. <laughs> you gotta explain it to the young people listening. <laughs> oh man, they don't get it. You know, it's just old songs, man, where you just blurt out the beginning, and, and everybody know what it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm gone, gone. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. uh-huh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. My daughter loves this song. Me too. Yeah. Uh-huh. Fire. Mm-mm-mm. Oh, say child. Fire. Woo, woo, woo. The woo, woo, woo. Fire. So, say child. Fire. They don't make them like this anymore. No, they the don't. The way you walk and talk, it oh. really sets me off to a five-alarm child. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> the way you squeeze and tease knocks me to my knees. Come out smoking, baby. <laughs> <laughs> the way you swerve and curve, <laughs> it really racks my nerves. And I'm so excited, child. Woo! Take your time. Woo! Woo! Let me know, huh? <laughs> Go to get your wish. Oh, yeah! yeah. Bye. Yeah. Sure, the strong. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> let us have it, Steve Harvey. Man, Good just morning. Cause I just felt like some uh, old uh, ass, hard ass singer. That's that loud singer that never made it. Because he wasn't quite on the notes, but you couldn't tell him that. Yeah. <laughs> but he had man. all the Hollywood singer moves. Though. Man, all I ought to have that. Roscoe Wallace make an appearance. Oh, Carla oh. Farrell, your favorite Ro- Roscoe Wallace. Uh, yeah, what's up? Hard singing. Hey, Steve, what's up, crew? Ain't nothing with it. Junior. Morning, Unc. I just be seeing you in concert doing that whole thing, dog. That's what I be Boy, looking at. You don't understand. I was there. <laughs> dog, I saw Teddy laugh. I saw how a play of life. Uh-huh. Y'all missed concerts that was real concerts, and yeah. the dudes actually sound just like the record. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Like Luther. Ooh. What no damn remixes. Uh-uh. <laughs> remix? No. <laughs> you don't remix hits. Skin tight. <laughs> <laughs> just random. Skin tight. Skin tie. I like when he just blurts them out of nowhere. You're a bad, <laughs> bad miss ass. Yeah. In them skin tight reaches. Hang on, Sugarfoot. Coming up uh, at 32 uh, can minutes. I, can, I, can I just go and say good morning since ain't nobody say good morning? Yeah. I'm good sorry, morning. Tommy. What's up, man? I'm sorry. My bad. <laughs> skin tight guy came over me. Never you talk to King of Prince. I'm sorry. <laughs> Coming up in 32 minutes after the hour, ask the CLO, the chief love officer in the building right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, guys, time now for Ask the CLO. Go to steveharveyfm.com to submit your question for our chief love officer, Steve Harvey. Ready, CLO? One time. Here we go. This one is from Monet in Alabama. Monet says, I'm a 28-year-old professional female, and the love of my life is 29. We are living proof that opposites attract. Um, He's got his GED, and he makes a great living as a construction worker. He cleans up nicely, and he is fine. There are two things that concern me. He uses street slang all the time, and I try not to correct him because it usually starts an argument. The other problem is that he's not open to try new things, so if we eat out, he gets chicken tenders or a burger. Are these big issues, or am I being shallow? You being real shallow. Shallow. Mm-hmm. You just said the love of your life, man of your dreams, opposites attract. He got a GED. This is world. This how he talks. Now, he can get better, but when True. he go out, he he go what's safe. 
See, see, let me tell you, it's a lot of times people don't want to, they, they don't like to embarrass themselves by trying something, can't pronounce it, don't know what it is, ain't ever had, it might cost too much. So now, but where is it y'all going to? Everywhere y'all go, they got chicken to me. <laughs> you might, he, if chicken tenders ain't on the menu, you might can get him to try something else. So women oftentimes make their men better. Yeah. So take him to different places and, you know, say, just, just, you know, have him try some stuff on your plate. You know, let him get the chicken where he feels safe and comfortable, then let him try some stuff on your plate. You may have a great, you probably got a great guy there, but you don't let a dude go because he talks slang. No, that's true. All right, Tammy in St. Louis says, I started a new job a month ago, and I work with a lot of women, so I knew there'd be drama. Yesterday on my way to lunch, my neighbor's fiance pulled up, and I waved at him as I walked by. One of my coworkers got in his car. They kissed and drove off. When I came back, the same coworker came to my office to tell me I better not tell my neighbor what I saw, or she would slap the urine out of me, let's say. Uh, I wanted to snatch her ponytail off, uh, but I kept my cool. Going forward, how should I deal with her? Wow. What, 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 what? There's nothing for you to do. It's absolutely nothing for you to do, except yeah, say, listen to me. Business. First of all, I'm not in your business. You do what you want to do. But secondly, you're not finna slap me. Mm-hmm. Ever. I Nothing want you to understand that. <laughs> Ever. Yeah. Behind. <laughs> now, nah, you, you don't don't worry about what I might say, but yeah. please do not think that I'm the person you're going to walk over here and slap because I'm not. You can do whatever you want to do. I don't right. give a damn. Yeah, right. that is, she's a bully. <laughs> Come yeah. on, man. But you Come run on. your yeah. ass over here on me. Yeah. Hmm. I'm going to whoop your ass then tell her. <laughs> you're going to really yeah. be mad. No, mm-hmm. really. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Wow, but she's she all, she all at work with it, though. But yeah. you're going to do something wrong and then threaten somebody, man. Yes, right. Uh-huh. Right. Uh-huh. right. Yeah, you should be a little more discreet with your cheating. All right. Uh, Anonymous in Florida says, I'm a 30-year-old single female, and I work as a dental assistant for a prominent black dentist. For the past three years, we've been having an affair, and he takes good care of me. He's my dad's age, and my parents are friendly with him and his wife. My parents have a big wedding anniversary dinner planned, and the dentist is coming with his wife. I don't want to be around his wife, so I asked him not to show up. He said his wife is looking forward to it, so they're coming. Why would he hurt me this way? Mm. That's that's her letter? Yeah, that's her question. How you think as the number two you ain't going to get hurt? Mm. Mm. But they all let your parents out. Excuse me. They're, they're he can't dad. put you in front of his wife. Right. His wife want to go. She looking forward to it because they cool with your parents. He coming. He coming mm-hmm. with her. Yeah. 30-year-old got to grow up. Mm. All you got to do is pop in and say hey and then disappear if you don't want to see it. Yeah. Mm. She can't there leave her it. parents' anniversary then. <laughs> okay. <laughs> then sit there and deal with it. Three years. <laughs> look. <laughs> You have been screwing this woman's husband for three uh, years. Mm-hmm. You made that your is a cost to that. Yeah. And now you finna find out who got dibs. Oh, he yeah. take good care of you. Ain't no problem. Yeah. You can get taken care of. But he got to take care of his house, too. But you know what, Steve? She sounds, too, like she might do something stupid at this dinner. You know, like call him out or try to get him in trouble with his wife or something. Well, I don't know I, why don't, you do that. You've been knowing that. the man was married. Mm-hmm. Yeah. See, yeah. when you play when you play the dirty game, mm-hmm. you know, you got to be ready now mm-hmm. to get some oh. dirt on you. Get some yeah. dirt on you. Yeah. But, ain't, but, but, but ain't no need of you snapping. Right. Yeah. Just why don't you, you just don't find your own man? Yeah. yeah. Just somebody to go that? with. Yeah. Right. Yeah. There you go. Bring a date. Bring a date your parents. Bring a date. But you stupid. So you just been seeing him. So he been seeing her and you. Yeah, you stupid. If you're going to play really the game, know the rules. Mm-hmm. Woo. Mm-hmm. He takes really good care of me. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah. He just, he just he ain't the only person that'll take free. good care That's of you. 
He's your dad's age. They're friends. He's got to come to the wedding anniversary. He How has can you to. Think he's not coming mm-hmm. with his hope wife. Your daddy don't find this out. Yeah, you got to be cool. Like she got to get another rules. job. There are yeah. other dentists out there. Get you another job and another man. man. Yeah, that's that's all me. you. All you got to do is get another man. Yeah, yeah he takes fine. such good care of me. Okay, right. but he take better care of his wife. Yeah. Oh. Oh. oh wow. <laughs> Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Yeah. Just got real up in here. <laughs> Sorry. She doesn't Sorry. want to be around his wife, so she asked him not to show up. That's just crazy. How will he not show up to his friend's anniversary dinner? That doesn't even make sense. Then they'll really suspect something. The number two don't get to vote. Uh-uh. Make any mm. demands. <laughs> All right. Thank you, CLO. Great advice as always. Coming up next, the nephew with Run That Prank Back right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour, Miss Ann is standing by with today's national news. And in entertainment news, we'll tell you what the boobs out for Cardi B hashtag is all about. Wow. Uh, Plus, we have the Forbes list of self-made women with the highest net worth. Hmm, who do you think is number one? We'll talk about all Hmm. of these stories at the top of the hour, but right now, the nephew is here with Run That Prank Back. What you got for us, Nev? Church calendar. Mm -hmm. Church calendar. Yeah. (laughs) Thinnifold. We got to get it on there. We we got to do it the right way. Yeah, yeah, this is crazy, right? Come on now. Come on now. (laughs) The church, though. The church calendar. You know, they don't make calendars no more. You know what I'm saying? Calendar. The church calendar. Let's go, cat dog. Hello. Hello. I'm trying to reach uh, Sister Allison. Allison. Uh, um, Allison. She's not here, man. She at work. Um, as a speaker. Hey, this is uh, this is Brother Lester. Brother Lester. How you doing today? All right, Lester. Brother Lester. Right from the church. Okay. Okay. Over at uh, my. Right. 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 You a husband, right? What, Gerald? I'm Gerald. Gerald. Yeah, this is Gerald. Yeah, okay, okay. I met you a couple of times, Gerald. We ain't seen you in a minute, though. Man, I've been working on Sundays, and I said that I was going to try to make it. But I told her, you know, I want to get involved. You know, this year is going to be a better year. I'm going to get involved, man. Well, come on down, man. We we love to have you. That's for sure, man. I, can I get you a number where she can call me back? Well, okay, yeah, sure. Um, is this about, you know, a lesson or something? What's going on? Actually, the uh, single ministry, man, I'm over the single ministry, and we're raising some money. So we're actually putting together a uh, a calendar, and we wanted her to uh, give us a call about it. Okay. Okay. So let me let me give you, let me give you my number real quick. What, wait a minute. Okay, you say a calendar. So the church is doing the calendar, but is it like the couples? Like we come in, like how it always be like the couples come in and be like, this is Mister and Mrs. I mean, a calendar. No, I don't no, no, no. What we doing? See, a lot of the guys got together. What we're gonna do is the Mount swimsuit calendar and we're gonna we kind of put that together man so let me give you my number man because i want to call all the guys were saying if she get on the calendar it'll probably get sold all the you guys. know wait the a minute time. wait a minute whoa, whoa 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 let's slow down slow down brother lester let's slow down okay uh a calendar a swimsuit calendar for the for the single ministry at the church what it is uh gerald we're gonna be the first church to who have ever done a swimsuit calendar you see what i'm saying no, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait. You call it for my wife to be in it. Are you sure you got the right number? Because Yeah, yeah, there. yeah. I mean, because your wife is Allison, right? Yes, my wife is Allison. And first of all, then what's this man about all the guys y'all got together and y'all voted for my... Okay, I'm trying to take this slow, man. Ooh, God, hold my tongue right now because I'm trying... I don't understand where you're going with this. And Listen, we're going to get Sister Gidry. She's going to be Miss March. June is like pretty much in the middle of the year. We want your wife to be the big centerfold. Please, please tell me. You're not calling my house this morning talking about my wife to be in a calendar, a swimsuit calendar. But then on top of that, y'all all got together and y'all voted that y'all want my wife to be in a swimsuit calendar for a church. Okay, well, wait, wait, wait a minute, Gerald. I mean, look at this on the positive side, man. What this is, see, like I say, we raising money for the singles ministry, and the single ministry get ready to go on a big trip. But hold on, man. What my wife got to do with the singles ministry? She's married, man. All the people that's in the singles ministry, why are you calling and talking about my wife being in something like this? You hold up that. Ooh, Jesus, help me. Hey, man, you 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 should feel uh, honored, man, that your wife is a. Man, why are y'all looking at my wife like that, man? We coming in there, and we trying to get help, and we trying to do it. Y'all looking at my wife, talking about y'all want my wife to be in a swimsuit contest, man? Do 
you understand what that is, man? They ain't nothing but some panties, man. So y'all looking at my wife, talking about y'all want my wife to be in her panties? See, what you got to understand, Gerald, this right here, man, is for the single ministry. We, we got a big trip coming up, so we raising money. For what, what are y'all doing, man? This not something you do at the church, man. You have car washes, man. When I, man, when I was little, we wash cars, man. Y'all talking about a calendar, man. What are you doing, man? What type of church is this that turned into, man? See, Gerald, the difference is on this whole thing, man. Don't be upset about it. What it is is that, man, we done found something that ain't no other church done before. You see what I'm saying? The reason ain't no other church done is because this is wrong, man. What committee got to get on something like this, man? What is wrong with you? Hey, dog, you got to understand, listen, we got Sister Gidry, we got Sister Vicky, okay? Uh, so Ms. wait a minute, you saying that they done man. signed off on this. You got these women in the church saying that they going to put on swimsuits. Well, well, I'm saying we got them on our list. We got them on That's our what list. I'm oh. saying, man, ain't nobody getting with man. What is wrong with you, man? Hey, hey, man, listen, just to help us get started, do you have a picture a sister Allison in a swimsuit? Man, look, man, I ain't giving you no picture of my wife in no swimsuit, man. No, this is just something we're trying to do for the ministry, dude. You know what? Are you at the church? Did you work at the church full time? Part time, I'm at the church. Okay, are you in there now? No, nah, I'm not there right now, but I'm going to be there for, for choir rehearsal later on this evening. Okay, what time do choir rehearsal start, Left. Seven o'clock, but why you, what, 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 what I want you to do is for me, before you go to rehearsal, can you just be right in the front right quick? I just want to, we need to meet personally right quick, Lester, me and you. So I'm going to come to the rehearsal and then let's talk about this face to face because this over the phone and all that, this is not working right now. And I need to meet the person that's calling in my damn house talking about my wife doing all this idiotic type so let's meet right in the front, brother, before you go to the sing. I, I got something for you to sing, hey, dog. So meet me in the front, man, please, before you go in, Lester, because we ain't going to talk about this no more over the phone. Let's talk about this in person. Okay. First of all, I mean, you got to calm down, man. I don't even understand why you irate like You know what? Yeah, I'm going to calm down, Lester. Seven. So it started at seven. Let's do six fifty five, Lester. I think this is gonna work for us. This is gonna help your calendar get out the way that you really, really needed to get out, man. I got something for you that's gonna help this cause. Please be outside at six fifty five. Please don't go in the I'm gonna be outside. I'm, you, can you bring a picture with you? Oh yeah, I got a picture for you. I got a nice picture for you. I'll tell you what, me and Tommy will be outside waiting on you when you get there. You're in who? Me and nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show, we're going to be right outside in front of the church. Oh, <laughs> Oh, man. Man, who did this, man? Hey, man, your Ooh. brother Jason told me to prank phone call you, man. God, man. This <laughs> you, know, you know what he said? Tell him I said if that fool came to church more often, he would know that this is a prank phone call. <laughs> oh, shit. Man, I'm glad it is, man. Can you just imagine if I had to drove up to that church acting a fool today, man? Yeah, I got, I got to ask you this here, man. What is the baddest, and I mean the baddest, radio show in the land? Man, the Steve Harvey Morning Show, man. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies, y'all think y'all might want to, you know? No. No, we're good, no. thanks. No. Be a part of the calendar? No, no, no. Now, don't let the Lord down now. Don't do that. Now. What? Oh, the be quiet. to <laughs> do with the Lord. It's crazy. Right. <laughs> Ooh, if my mom was here, she'd be like, the Lord ain't got nothing to do with that. Yeah. You're just stupid. Uh -huh. We got calendars on our phone. We're good. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Oh, I could do church a church calendar. calendar app then. That's what I... Oh, <laughs> You're digital now? <laughs> All right. Enough, nephew. Coming up at the top of the hour, we'll have some entertainment and national news right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. In entertainment news, the hashtag boobs out for Cardi was trending. Cardi B... Um, accidentally posted a topless photo. Um, this happened right after, you know, it was her birthday. She had been partying all night with her estranged husband offset at the Atlanta strip joint. Cardi deleted the topless Instagram story as soon as she realized her mistake, but thousands took screenshots and shared it on social media. The Hades body shame, the haters body shamed Cardi and insulted the appearance of her areolas. 
She explained how the body changes due to breastfeeding. Her followers posted their own topless photos, women and men, with the hashtag boobs out for Cardi to support her. So there you go. She's got a lot of fans and a lot of love out there. Just check this this hashtag this morning. Well, should we support? She deleted it. (laughs) She deleted it. You on board? You on board? We all support. Cardi, now come on now. Let's not. Let's leave. Let's not 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 support now. Let's. On the count of three, let's all support together. We ready? We on Zoom. Come on. Ready? <laughs> we taking our pictures. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, mistakes happen. You know, she was lit. She talked about it, on, you know, for her birthday. She did a lot of celebrating, so it was a mistake. Uh-huh. When you it get back with your ex. Yeah. Turned Woo. up. Woo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tear that little divorce thing right on up. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, in other entertainment news, Forbes has put together a ranking of the self-made women in the country with the highest net worth. All right. Um, I'll go down the list, and then you guys can tell me who you think is on, uh, who's number one. All right. Okay. Ready, Steve? Here we go. Kim Kardashian's net worth, $780 million. Her little sister, yeah. Kylie Jenner, net worth $700 million. Rihanna yeah. has a net worth of $600 million, which includes her successful brand, Fenty Beauty, of course. Uh, Beyonce's net worth is about $420 million. Uh, you know, her, her, her stuff comes from, her money comes from her albums, her tours, her streaming specials, her partnership with Adidas for her Ivy Park line, all of that. Now, who's number one? That's what I want to know. Who'd you guys think was number one and how much? We named Ooh. Kim Kardashian, Kylie mm-hmm. Jenner, Rihanna. I mean, Oprah has. Oprah. That's Oprah Winfrey. a lot of money. You got it. It's not Miss Winfrey. You got it, Oprah. Oprah. You want to guess yeah. on the on the on the money? Thirty billion. Uh, 30 her net billion. worth probably one point eight billion. Uh, try two point nine billion, almost <gasps> three. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, oh. Crush him. <laughs> yeah. <Just> kill him. <laughs> Killing the right game. Two point nine. I'm I'm one point one billion off. <laughs> 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 Talk about Mr. Number. Yeah. Talk a lot of billion zero. off. I love that. Go ahead, sisters. Wow. All of them. Yes. Yes. That's big. so big. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Rihanna, oh. Mm-hmm. Oh, Rihanna killing the game. Beyonce, oh, yes, she all is. All them girls, man. All yeah. them girls. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's quite impressive. I love it. And they hey, work Rihanna hard, too. Hasn't dropped. Re- well, it's Rihanna, actually. She yeah, Rihanna. You're album. right. It is Rihanna. It's Rihanna. She hasn't dropped the album in a while either. So she's and people still are calling for money. her, yeah, to, yes. to drop some. Oh, music. it's not Rihanna no more. It's Rihanna. It's Rihanna. We've been I think saying it has it wrong. always been Rihanna. We've been saying it wrong. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah we've been. She saying just it said wrong. Rihanna. She just let people roll with it, but it, it is. But it's Rihanna. Rihanna. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, congratulations, ladies. Congratulations. All right, Steve. Time for today's headlines. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Ann Tripp. Thank you very much, everybody, and good morning. Here it is with the news. Senator and vice presidential candidate Kamala Harris took her turn yesterday grilling Supreme Court nominee Amy Coney Barrett. She was clearly dissatisfied with the answer she got about a woman's right to a legal abortion and some other answers she didn't really favor. At one point, Harris said, quote, I would suggest we not pretend. It was a quote pointing to several ads that Judge Barrett signed on to in the past, expressing her anti-abortion sentiment. Harris also mentioned President Trump's campaign promise to appoint justices to the high court who are opposed to abortion rights. A Justice Barrett's, a judge, rather, Barrett sidestepped the question uh, completely. Barrett also refused to say whether or not she thought a president should commit to a peaceful transfer of power. Barrett said, quote, I don't want to express a view. Prosecutors have charged a 42-year-old white man with federal hate crimes for allegedly attacking three black teenagers at a Michigan beach. Authorities say Lee Mouat uh, hit one of the youngsters across the face with a bike lock, uh, breaking his jaw and knocking out several teeth, threatening to, quote, bash their heads in if they didn't turn down their music, which he said was gang music. Witnesses say Mouat used the N-word several times, said, you don't belong on this beach, and said black lives don't matter. If convicted, this guy faces up to 10 years in prison. 
A white former Chicago police officer, Jason Van Dyke, has withdrawn his appeal of his conviction in the murder of a young black teenager named Laquan McDonald. You may remember this case. The decision means that Van Dyke will serve out the rest of his six and three quarter year sentence for shooting 17 year old Laquan in the back as Laquan was walking away from police carrying a small pocket knife. Jason Van Dyke claimed at the time he feared for his life. A jury disagreed with that one. According to Washington Post, a Twitter has suspended a bunch of fake accounts that claim to be black Trump supporters for violating its policies against platform manipulation. But it went out to thousands and thousands of people. So they say basically it's kind of too late to do anything to, about it or to rein it in. It's just not going to work. Here's a rich bit of, of little tea. Gossip site Blast claims that Nene Leakes wanted Bravo to pay her 125000 bucks to attend Atlanta housewife Cynthia Bailey's marriage to Mike Hill last weekend. If you remember, any of you guys who are gals who watch Atlanta housewife Cynthia and Riri were supposed to be real tight friends at one point. Anyway, according to the story, Bravo rejected the offer, said, I'm not going to pay you that kind of money. They did want Nene to come back for between six to eight episodes for about 76000 but she turned that offer down. Sad news, actress Conchata Farrell has died. She did a lot of work, but she was most recently known as the maid on One and a Half Men. Actually, that was two and a half. Conchata was 77. Now back to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Determined voters, thousands of people, some braving hour-long wait. Uh, Waits, glitches, and politically motivated obstruction are flocking to cast early ballots as Americans are getting out to vote. Uh, However, do your part. Don't be fooled about the polls or the survey numbers. In a recent interview on The Shade Room, Reform Alliance CEO and political commentator Van Jones said millions of white men are going to come out and vote for Trump. Take a listen. You got a bunch of white dudes that did not vote in 2016. They were like, screw it. But now Trump is in there. And they said, well, that's our that's our guy. That's that's our guy. And so now you're going to see them. Now, they're not being polled by anybody. Nobody's calling them. They're not considered likely voters because they probably hadn't voted since Ronald Reagan. But they're going to come out their house to vote for Trump. And so the, don't get fooled by the polls. Don't get comfortable by the polls. We're going to have to vote like we never voted before. That's true. This is that's true. Real talk. This is because true. listen to me, y'all. I'm driving down the street yesterday, mm-hmm. and I saw the biggest sign I've ever seen in somebody's yard. Mm-hmm. Trump and Pence make America great again. And you know, I just, I often, I just don't know, you know, it's hard for me because I just don't understand the Trump supporter because of all he's done. And if, and if you just, if you just, if you care anything about the truth, the truth of what he's done, it's it's appalling if you if you have a sensibility for other humans or just just morality or or right and wrong. It's right. just amazing the things he's done, said, and gotten away with. No other president Alive. has had more people in his camp go to prison. Mm. Mm. that are directly related to him and he can't go because you can't indict a sitting president. You don't think that Michael Cohen has something on him. You don't think Roger Stone has something on him. You don't think Manafort has something on him. You don't think General Flynn has something on him. You Mm. don't think Roger Barr, Robert, whatever his name is. William Barr. This oh, the, dude uh, right mm-hmm. here, this hand Intern- picked uh, flunky for the president. What he has done over the past four years is appalling. But I am telling you what Van Jones is saying. There are a group of white men who would give anything to be him. Oh, Brother, yeah. now you the Playboy Bunnies, uh-huh. the porn stars, yeah. the that money, kind of power, the jet, yeah. That, yeah. the uh-huh. name on buildings. Oh, that lifestyle. That supersedes all morality. Yeah. I see. Okay. All right, Steve. Yeah, get out and vote. Please get out and vote. Early vote. Coming up at 34 minutes after the hour, the president's son, Baron Trump, now had uh, COVID-19. We'll talk about that right after this. No! Oh, boy. Got it from his daddy. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 
All right, what is going on? In trending political news, First Lady Melania Trump revealed yesterday that her son Barron had COVID-19 without any symptoms. Uh, remember, Mrs. Trump tested positive about two weeks ago, and it's being reported that Barron also tested positive around that time. However, the White House said publicly that Barron had tested negative for COVID-19. Remember that. That was another yes. lie. Apparently, another what one. What is going on? Oh, oh, yeah. Man. <laughs> Baron is over this whole experience. I bet you he threw with this white house. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's 14. I mean, yeah, he's, he's a kid, you he's know? A kid. He's a kid. Yeah. 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 Oh, this, is, this is just really something. And, and his father is still out, you know, being Campaign. the super spread it, yeah. spreader, being the super spreader. Uh, uh, NBC News will hold a town hall event with President Trump uh, tonight in Miami. Uh, the one-hour event will be hosted by Today Show anchor Savannah Guthrie. Joe Biden is also holding a town hall event in Philadelphia on ABC. Um, and this is in lieu of the debate that was supposed to be, you mm -hmm. know, so tonight. they, they scratched that, yeah. And uh, now they're just uh, doing, you know, their town hall meetings. Uh, also, Joe Biden I'm will get a boost not from... Another debate. Well, it's supposed well, there's to be, supposed to be three. three. There's supposed to be another one. Yeah, there's yeah, supposed to be one more. Yeah. yeah. Also, Joe Biden will get a boost from former President Barack Obama, who is expected to hit the campaign trail soon in support of his former VP. Early voting has started in many states, as we've been talking about. Uh, it is only 19 days before the November 3rd election. So please, please go to vote.org to get all of your early voting information for your state. OK, that's vote.org. Org. Yeah. Mm, yeah. So we voted. Um, uh, uh, Tommy's voted. Carla's voted. I yes. voted. So, yeah, yeah. We're, we're, we're getting out there. We're doing it. So you guys, we want you guys to please vote as well. Please. Mm -hmm. We can't walk the walk <laughs> or talk the right. talk and not walk the walk. So yeah. Yeah. most definitely. Yeah. Go to vote.org. Find out when you can early vote. Take where a chair. Place is. Yep. Take you yep. some yep. bottles of water and just yep. ride it out. And a snack. Yeah. And, and a snack. You know, I went I, to about three, I think three different locations, my husband and I, and we, mm -hmm. we found a location where we the line wasn't as long. So we mm -hmm, stood in the line mm -hmm. about an hour and a half, man. But we mm -hmm. got in line, got it done, got our mask. Yeah. Felt good, didn't it? It feels so good. It, it feels so good. good Tommy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, the so actual voting process. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead, Steve. No, I'm just saying, you have a choice with. Where you can vote, they don't have it. Where you have to vote on, in a certain on the, district. Yeah. Well, you have a choice you in the county yeah. in, in early voting. Oh, it man. was a choice. You could go within, as long as you're within the county, you can pick oh, okay. the uh, okay. different polling locations and just show up with your ID and your voter registration card. You know, you don't want no stuff. After you just yeah. stood in line all that time, <laughs> you don't want to hear it. <laughs> right. And the actual voting process for people who've never voted or haven't voted in a long time, it doesn't take long at all. Once you're in, it doesn't take long. Once you show them your ID and get your little card that you stick in the machine and all that, yep. that process is not long at all. So you can get in and out and go on about your day, whatever you have to do. So I just want people to know, don't don't worry about the long lines. I mean, uh, if you're if you're not working, you're just going to... you're you'll be at home anyway sitting so you'll just now be in line waiting to vote you know exercise your civic duty so yeah um go ahead and get out there and get in it and you know and, yeah. and vote and do it early so they can tell they say almost like 10 and a half million people have already voted I so believe far it. yeah I, just yeah. like steve's been saying this is an yeah. election of our lifetime yeah right here, it though. really really is vote yeah. like your life depended on it too because it really does, oh, it does. When this you think is about as it. big mm -hmm. if not bigger exactly see it. At for least, us yeah <laughs> at least when um who did obama run against in 16 uh, Mitt Romney. Mitt Romney. Oh, and 16? He... No, he was out. 16, that was Trump and Hillary. But you're talking about um, uh, when his second term. His second term. He oh, Ada was McCain. First, McCain first it was Romney. McCain, then Mitt Romney. Yeah. Yes, 2012. This is bigger than both of those because at least McCain and Romney were decent people. Decent men, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, McCain sure. would have made a good president, actually. Yeah. Not mm -hmm. better than Obama, but he would have made a good president. All right. Coming up next, the nephew with the prank phone call right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 
Coming up at the top of the hour, right about four minutes after, it's my strawberry letter for today. Subject, there are way there were way too many people in one bed. Uh-oh. Oh, whoa. <laughs> what is whoa. that about? Way too That's you weird. You need that California bed. king, baby. You need that <laughs> California king. <laughs> right now, we'll get into the strawberry letter <laughs> later, but right now, the nephew is here with today's prank phone call. What you got for us, Nev? Well... Time to start whooping ass again. Huh? Wait, Corporal what? Your... punishment. Corporal Lord. punishment. You know we need that ass whooping back in the school. You know we need it. How? Oh, Social yeah, what? <laughs> yeah, what are we going to do? We're going to zoom it? <laughs> what are we doing? Now, you around. get your behind whooped from a distance. Up to the now, I've had it done. <laughs> <laughs> what, Junior? Turn around and put your behind up to the camera. He's going to get this. Turn around and put your behind up to the camera. <laughs> that sounds so doggo crazy. <laughs> Let's go. Right. Corporal punishment. Come on, cat dog. Crazy. Oh. Hello. Hello. Hi, I'm um trying to reach a Mr. Cotton. This Mr. Cotton. Okay, can can you turn your radio or TV down? I can't really hear you. Oh yes, sir. Um my name is Mr. Lanson. I'm actually the new principal here at um middle school. And what's the name again? Uh, Mr. Lanson. Mr. Lanson, okay. Your your son, he attends middle school here, am I correct? Yes, sir. Okay, good. Listen, um, I'm the new principal here. We've um, just replaced the last principal, and I'm actually calling around. What I've done is when I, before I got here, I asked for a list of students that were, you know, I'm not going to say problem kids, but, you know, that kind of get themselves in a little trouble here and there, and your son's name happens to be on the list. Name is on that list? Uh, yes, I got about uh, I got about thirty five kids that are actually on this list, and your son is actually on the list, and and you you are Mr. Cotton, correct? I am Mr. Cotton. I mean, are, are we? Are you sure you speaking about my son, though? Um, yeah. I mean, there's only there's only one on the list, sir. I'm I'm, I'm and it's 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 what's been given to me, and what what I'm doing is calling around to all of the parents of the kids that are on this list. And letting you guys know that I'm going to be keeping a close eye on them, as well as uh, letting you know that I'm going to be reinstating corporal punishment here in the school. So, so corporal punishment. Uh, what, what, what's that? That's actually where if your son gets sent to the office, which is my office, then there will be paddling going on. And opposed to, I, I don't believe in, oh, I don't oh, believe oh, in oh, detention. Oh, 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 oh. I don't believe in suspension. I believe in, you know, if we spank these kids, we can get them back in order. So, so you, you going to spank him, sir? Here's my thing. I really, truly believe that if we get back to, 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 you know, and I don't mean what I'm about to say to be harsh, but if we get back to beating <laughs> we'll get these kids back in order. I mean, but I'm, uh, I know he had trouble in English, but I don't think that uh, calls for uh, a <laughs> beating, for uh, no, a low no, grade. No, 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 no. This has nothing to do with grades, sir. This has to do with punishment. And what I'm understanding is if your son is on my list, and if your son comes down to my office I'm going to take care of it right then I and there. what, if my son come to your office, you're going to be on my damn list. Well, it's, it's, sir, I'm trying to get these kids back in order, and that's the reason why I've been brought in and I've replaced the last principal. You understand? So what I need from you is to get a, to get a great understanding that if your child comes to my office, corporal punishment will be what he's going to deal well, with. I okay? You, I tell you what. Let my son come home and tell me he got some damn corporal punishment, and the next morning, me and you going to do some corporal punishment. Sir, do you want your child in order, or do you want to be bailing his butt out of jail at the age of 18? They're going to be bailing me out of jail if you put your damn hands on my son. Okay, are you taking care of your son punishment-wise at home? You need to... My son don't get in no damn trouble. My son okay, got that, 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 here, here's, here, here's the problem. Parents not believing that their children get in any trouble. That's the first problem. Well, then, I got email. I got phone call. So the first phone call I get is going straight to <laughs> whipping. It ain't no letter sent home. Ain't no email sent home saying there is a problem. I don't, I don't, I don't, sir. I, I, I'll, you know, I'm going to calm down here. I, I'm going to tell you once again, I am not going to, to, to have, send your son to detention. I'm not going to call you. I'm going to take care of my job. My job is to make sure. I'm going to take care of mine. When you take care of yours, I'm going to take care of mine. And that's protect my son. And you put your hands on him, and we got a problem. Oh, we're going to have a problem because nine times, I'm telling you right now, I'm calling you and giving you the warning. Your son will be dealt with. And you're going to be dealt with. will be dealt with on a regular basis if need and be. you're going to get dealt with on a regular basis. You're going to get tired of seeing me. Okay, sir, 
Do I need to actually have corporal punishment with you? I tell you what, when you do, when you bring that corporal punishment to me, you better have the police there because they going to need corporal punishment. They going to need whatever else. They going to need the SWAT team when I get down and you put your hands on my son. I know that. I, I, all I'm, you know what, sir? Maybe, maybe, maybe the, 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 the swooping needs to start with you. It, it has to. Matter of fact, what time do you go to lunch? We can do this in front of the cafeteria and let all the kids see the damn principal get his damn corporal punishment. Hey, sir, sir, I'm not, I'm not, I, I don't, I don't fear you, first of all. I don't want you to fear me, because I want you to stand there and take your whip like a man. I don't want to chase you around like no little around the school. Sir, 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 the bottom line is, corporal punishment is being instated. Your son is going to abide by it. You're going to have to accept it. Or maybe I maybe you, you what, need to... I'll tell you what. You said you got 35 names on your list. It better be 34 because the cotton name better not be on no corporal punishment list. I know sir, that. Sir, sir, listen. He's not on a corporal punishment list. He's on a list of, kid, of kids that act up from time to time. I, my damn son don't act up. My son is a model student. He got a little trouble with English. You know, because his mom a little slow, but I, that's my, I, I, I did that. You know what I'm saying? You know what? Sometimes I feel like I'm talking to the child right now. You're talking to a grown man, and if you put your hands on my son, you're going to see that I'm a grown man when I come down there. Okay. I don't so, want to put my hands on my damn son. Then, then, then I guess it's going to be a lot of kicking, sir. It's going to be some kicking, and you line them up. Assistant principal, principal, I kick the cafeteria lady. So I come down there if she got something to say. You're gonna watch your tone. You understand me? And you're gonna you're gonna take what I'm hey, telling you. you. I'm a grown man. Who are you I, yelling? At? I don't care what you're saying. Everybody's gonna abide. I put chains on the door. I make sure. Oh, no, Joe Clark putting chains on the door. I, I thought your name was Lansom. You Joe Clark. I, I'm Mr. Lanson, and these kids are gonna abide by what I want, and so are the parents. And damn it, you, Mr. Cotton, you're going to have to toughen up and let me do my I damn job. What, I tell you what, then you go on and do what you got to do today. But when I get down there, you better have the police when I get there. I tell you who else I'm going to have here. If you tell me who the you going to have down there, then. I'm going to have nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show, because that's who I am. Your co-worker, Silver, you got me to prank phone call you. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> time, I'm going to tell you what, I'm going to prank Call your <laughs> next time I catch you. Silvia, that's why you ain't get laid on that down at the job. In the rest. Don't play about my damn kids, man. Don't be putting your damn hands on my boy. Boy, Tommy. Boy, I was, I was on my way. I was looking for my damn keys when we were talking. I was going to whip your this morning. Hey, listen, I got one more thing to ask you, Mr. Cotton. What's that, man? What's the baddest radio show in the land? Man, that Steve Harvey Morning Show. <laughs> I love y'all, man. Uh, I love him, though. I love him. I love he's him. A, he's he's a, say his, his mama was a little slow, but that's my fault. See, I did that. That's my fault. I did that. He ain't that Mr. good. Mr. Cotton, he, I love Mr. His mama yeah. was a little slow, but that, that, that's, that's my fault. I did that. <laughs> he wrong for that. Yeah. <laughs> only, only problem he got in school is with English. That's it. <laughs> Oh, like man. when he said, you could call me, I got email. So the first phone call I get. <laughs> I'm whipping your ass, the vice principal ass, all the counselors ass. I whip the cafeteria lady ass if she got something. That's <laughs> everybody in school. I whip everybody they, ass in school. Did they put the swats back in school? No, no, no because no, no. it's it's a That's different gone. time right now. Yeah. Okay. You can put prayer back. Just put prayer yeah, back. Yeah, we no, need that. That's good, How Carla. About, come on, yes. Carla. That's yes. good. Yes. I yeah, love you want to put something back in school. Uh -huh. How about put that? Prayer. Put yes. prayer. Put the Lord back in there. That's right. All right, coming up, today's Strawberry Letter subject, uh, there were way too many people in one bed. We'll get into it right <laughs> after this. <laughs> mm. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Well, guys, only 19 days left until November 3rd. Go to vote.org to get your early voting locations and get out there and do your part. Vote and vote early. Time now right. for to yeah, time now for today's strawberry letter. And if you need advice on relationships, dating, work, sex, parenting, and more, please submit your strawberry letter to Steve Harvey FM and click submit strawberry letter. We do all these subjects, but like I said before, we mostly talk about sex and relationships. I mean, you know, you can write us about all this other stuff and we'll try to help you out, but mostly we talk about sex on this show. 
We do. Buckle up. Hold on tight. We got it for you. Here it is. Strawberry letter. Okay. Thank you, nephew. Subject, there were way too many people in one bed. Dear Stephen Shirley, I've been married for 22 years, and I have a big problem with my husband. My husband's co-worker recently bought a motorcycle, and my husband wants one, so he showed me pictures of the motorcycle on his phone. As I swiped through the pictures, my husband walked outside, and so I kept swiping through his pictures. I went as far back as March and came across a video of my husband naked. The video was done two days before my 50th birthday, and it was in a hotel room that had a jacuzzi in it. There were six or seven people in there in one bed, including two other naked men. My husband laid on the bed between two of the women, and they started kissing all over his body, and the video ended. I was so upset, my hands started shaking and my heart was racing. My husband came back inside and I didn't say a word. I wanted to ask him all about the art orgy, but I needed to get some information first. Later on, I called my brother to ask him what it meant if three guys were naked in one room. He said it is never good for a group of men to be naked together unless they're in a locker room. I told him it was a hypothetical question, but he said he knew exactly why I asked. He reminded me that we lived in a small town, and he said there have been rumors about my husband being into a lot of different sexual things. I told my brother it was all true and that I'd seen it for myself. He advised me to leave my husband because there's nothing else to talk about. I don't want my marriage of 22 years to end this this way, but there were way too many naked people in the bed. Do I take my brother's advice and leave or talk to my husband and hear his side of the story first? Please help. We need to see Well, um, uh, well, uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> um, all right. I, I, I'm sure this was a shocker to you. I'm sure it was. I mean, who wants to find out that their husband is cheating this way? Uh, why would he keep something like this on his phone anyway? I mean, does he go back and look at it from time to time? Did he, did he want to get caught subconsciously? Um, and, and it seems like everyone in town, according to your brother, knows anyway but you. And, and what a shame, after 22 years of marriage, he's brought unimaginable pain and embarrassment and humiliation to you. You said your hands were shaking. And I, I mean, so, but what I don't get, though, is, is why you didn't say anything right then and there when your husband came back in the house. I mean, what more information did you need? You have him on tape in an orgy. You ha- you have the evidence. You you want his side of the story? I mean, that was the time to get it. A- and what could he say anyway? What what really could he say? How could he get explain his way out of this? A- and listen, don't get me wrong. I know that this has turned your entire world upside down. Twenty two years of marriage with this man. Uh, but please, um, b- believe what's in front of your eyes. Please believe that and and base your decision on facts and and not the lies that your husband could tell you to try to get out of this particular mess. And this is really way more than just a mess. This is a hot, stinking mess right here. And, and, uh, you know, you don't need you don't deserve this. Okay, you deserve better. And please know that. Steve. I'm so damn confused. Yeah. (laughs) This damn mess. Yeah. Whew. Ladies and gentlemen, we are about to enter the twisted mind of a confused man. Let us begin. Been married 22 years. All this started over a damn motorcycle. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's what this was. A toy. That's all it was. Before I got a damn motorcycle, <laughs> he showed you a picture of the motorcycle, and then he walked outside. What? You left your phone with your wife, and you know you do wrong. Mm. Man, I swiped through the pictures after you looked at the motorcycle. So you swiping through them, and you went all the way back to March, and you came across this video your husband had. And video of your husband naked. Mm. Now, the video was two days for your 50th birthday. It was in a hotel room that had a jacuzzi in it. Now, here what it let it change. 
there were six or seven people in there on the bed. What kind of bed was this? <laughs> Tommy said California bed, King. Springs is good. No, that ain't no California King. Six, seven people. Grown ass people. Damn near 50. Mm. Can't fit in this bed. Now, unless the Keebler Elves was in there. <laughs> Some of the best top cookie makers in the world is Keebler Elves. <laughs> now, this this was inside of a tree house. Yeah. <laughs> I don't understand how six, seven people. And two naked men. Well, that's what was on the tape. Well, let's stop here, though. Let's see. Yeah. It's the two naked men that's the whole All right, just, whole thing. just hold it right there. We'll have part two of Steve's response coming up at 23 <laughs> minutes after the hour. My strawberry letter for today, the subject, there were way too many people in one bed. We'll get back into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, come on, Steve. Let's recap today's strawberry letter. The subject, there were way too many people in one bed. All right, this lady thumbing through her husband's phone. He didn't gay. They've been married 22 years. He wanted a motorcycle, was showing her the picture of the motorcycle, mm-hmm. left her with the phone, went outside. She went all the way back to March, found this picture, video of her husband naked. Mm-hmm. Now, this was two days before her 50th birthday. They was in a hotel room, had a jacuzzi in it, and it was six, seven people in on the bed. Uh, where's this hotel at with this big They're ass all in bed? The Springs are strong. And Ew. two of the people in the bed was naked men. Oh, this way is confusing. Then your the husband big... laid on the bed in between two of the women, and they started kissing all over his body, and the video ended. Mm. Now, you got to understand why the video ended. Okay, break that down. <laughs> yeah, break that well, down. Well, because what was happening after that, <laughs> you know, that was the part he didn't mind keeping. Mm-hmm. It's something that happened a little later on, because obviously he wasn't shooting the video. Nope. And obviously he got a copy of it from somebody, because ain't nobody holding his phone. They was just doing a copy of the video. He kept a copy he wanted. What about yeah. a Something selfie? happened. Something got out of hand. Mm. You didn't need to see that. Then your husband came back inside. Your hands are shaking. Your your, your heart was racing. You, <sighs> and you ain't say a word. I wanted to ask him about the orgy, but I needed to get more information first. Now, I'm I'm sorry, ma'am. You what more information yeah. was you looking for? What did you need? That was your ass, your damn husband, butt naked. That was him that laid on the bed with the seven people in it. He managed somehow to find a crack between two women. Don't say crack. Mm. Because this bed is crowded. A lot of cracks. Six, seven people in there. The little piece of sheet was showing. He jammed this fat ass down in there. And they started kissing on him. Yeah. All right. Now. Mm. You need some more information. So you called your brother to ask him what it meant if three guys was naked in one room. And then he told you a fact. It ain't ever good for a group of men. See, I if I'm in a room, I'm just saying if, I must be the only one in there that zips his pants up and down if we naked. <laughs> I can be the only one in here. It'd be eight, nine, eleven, thirteen people in here. But I got to be the only one in here that got to let the toilet seat up when we go in the bathroom. I'm the only one. And even when I come out and people go, Steve, why you leave the seat up? That's what would have to happen. Because I'm the only man in there. (laughs) So, and then you asked your brother about it. And -hmm. then you said it was a hypothetical question. But your brother said... Y'all live in a small town, and there's been rumors about your husband being into a lot of different sexual things. Because in a small town, see, six, seven people in that room, somebody told Talk who all was in the room. Yes. There's some talking so going the rumors on. is true. Your husband is into some other things. Or Jesus, one of them. Yep. <laughs> yep. We know that for sure. Oh, That's different. He in now. That's him. Mm-hmm. 
This is not a rumor. I told your brother it was all true. You seen it for yourself. He said, well, you'll leave your husband because there's nothing else to talk about. Now, you don't want your marriage of 22 years to end this way, okay? How do you want it to end? Right. Uh, do you want it to end with you with a uh, sexually transmitted disease? Do you want it to end with you finding out some more people pregnant? Do you want it to end by getting invited to come and then you get mad, y'all get in a fight? How you want it to end? Because it's ended. It's going to end, yeah. But there were way too many naked people in the bed. Ma'am, if it's one person, in the, why do you keep saying it was way too many naked people in the bed? Like see, two you, is okay. <laughs> see, you throwed off by the men. Now, I can understand that. See, because I guess, I guess, I'm just assuming as a woman, you thinking if it's another woman you're dealing with, you can fight that fight. But now you thinking if he has an appetite for something more than women, mm-hmm. then it could be trouble for you. So that is a dilemma that you have. But one naked person in the bed, is a problem. Yeah. He had a bunch. Now, your brother didn't told you, but you don't want to do that. So, do I take my brother's advice and leave, or do I talk to my husband and hear his side of the story first? I would love for you to talk to your husband so you can hear his side of the story. How can he lie his way out of you this? Can't. Okay, Shirley, Shirley, no ask way. me and I'm going to show you. Go ahead, ask me. All right, honey, um, listen, when you walked out of the room, um, I happened to go through your phone and I saw- You went through my phone? Yeah, well, you left it here. You wanted me to look at the pictures. Yeah, I did. You went through my phone? You heard what I said. I went through your phone. Oh, hell no. (laughs) So now we got a marriage where I can't trust you with my phone. Ain't this about her? Oh, that's how you're going to try to lie out that's of it? That's all he's going to do. Yeah. That's, that's weak. That's all he's going to do. I that's, know it's weak, but that's uh-huh. all he got. That's all he got. <laughs> all right, post your comments on today's Strawberry Letter at Steve Harvey FM on Instagram and Facebook. And check out the Strawberry Letter podcast on demand. Now, coming up at 46 minutes after the hour, our girl from the top, the one and only Cheryl Underwood, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour, it's Carla's reality update. But right now, Steve, please introduce our girl Ladies from and CBS. Gentlemen, the Cheryl top. Underwood. <laughs> Let me tell you why I'm laughing, and I'm so happy. First of all, I'm, I'm trying to stay calm because you know we're about to bring out the big guns to campaign. But before I say anything else, today is the last day I heard you can fill out your census form. Is that right, Cheryl? The strawberries? I believe so, Cheryl. I believe it is. Yeah. Because the Supreme Court said that uh, Commander and Cheeto to comb over could stop the census count, and wow. then what happened? Wow. Okay, wow. so this we need to get He's on so it powerful. right now. Yeah. Yeah. The last mm-hmm. people that can fill out their census, we need to fill out the census right now. Get on Please. any computer you got, phone, everything. Fill out the census because it could be like a half of a percentage or some little bitty number that would mm-hmm. throw off the money game. So we got to get on that right now. But I got to applaud everybody that's already voting out there Woo-hoo! standing in lines. Don't yes. let them turn you back. Mm-hmm. Listen, I think we need to be Cupid shuffling. We need food truck out there. We need DJ. We need everything. <laughs> Make it easy for people to stand out there for eight hours. Books, <laughs> spoken word, bands. Matter of fact, every <laughs> band word. that we love. Yeah, we need everything. We need gospel choirs. We need Mississippi Mass Choir. Uh, we gonna need uh, all Kurt the Franklin. bands. Uh, yeah, oh, Kurt gotta come out there and stomp. Stomp all the way to the pole, shut <laughs> scrub Listen, we need every band that we love. The elements, earth, wind, and fire. Where, Where's the main ingredients and where's all the bands, the Ohio players? Where's the dramatics? We can have a Budweiser Super Fest of nothing but voting. Listen to me, it be so many concerts. People be like, you going to vote? Hell yeah, I'm going to vote. Got an outfit and everything. Cheryl, I like it, Cheryl. Right. I really oh, do. Oh, I'm digging it. Uh-huh. I'm digging it. Uh-huh. I'm digging it. We can do it. We can do it. Yeah. All the funk bands out there, everybody, Morris Day in the time. Everybody come on out. We Whatever entertain time. and stroll all the way to the polls. But they bringing out the big guns. President Obama about yes. to jump in that joint. 
It's yeah. about to be on and popping. Y'all don't understand what's about to happen. And because this is the last day of Hispanic Heritage Month, I would like to say to our brown brothers and sisters, don't fall for the okie doke, man. They trying to play y'all. He don't like y'all either. So put Trump out of office. He got to go exterminate the White House. He got to get up out. Oh, was it too far, Steve? I'm sorry. Was it too far? I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. Go. He got, to, he got to go. And Michael B. Jordan, you can take off a shirt any day you want to to try to get me to vote. But the only person I want to see naked that will get my vote will be Junior. He can be buck naked with some socks on and some baby oil. And I'm going to the polls for Junior. <laughs> hey, Junior. Hey, Junior. As long as you go, Cheryl. Thank you, Cheryl. You got my Cheryl. vote, Junior. Hey. Oh, sorry. Huh? Coming up at the top answer? of the hour, Carla's reality update right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Tommy, let's go. Introduce her. Introduce her. It's that time, ladies and gentlemen. She is here, Carla Farrell, with what reality update? All right, thank you, nephew. Here we go, Real Housewives of Potomac. So Karen Shirley Mm -hmm. went back home to participate in her high school homecoming. Did you see that? The Grand Dame, yes. The Grand Dame, yes. Mm -hmm. And she invited Ashley and Giselle to come kick it with her because I think basically she wanted them to see, you know, where she's from and Mm -hmm. her meet her family. And you know, from day one, Karen has had this position that she's from you know, the Potomac, or she's earned her way to being a part of the Potomac elite, if you will. Mm-hmm. And so uh, Karen and, Gis- and uh, Ashley and Giselle, they all went down, and Karen is from a farm. Her family is, um, she's a daughter of a farmer, and Karen mm-hmm. says she was very proud of that. Mm-hmm. And so the, the girls got farm. to see, yeah, the yes, that's exactly mm-hmm. right. And her family and the farm has a, uh, 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 history, if you will, slave ownerships. The land has been passed down for their family, and now they own it. So it's really, really big. It's a really proud moment for her yeah. and her family. Meanwhile, they're all down there with Karen. Uh, Robin, she decides to meet with Candace and tell her how the meeting went with Monique at Karen's house and how Robin was just basically telling Candace that Monique was not remorseful for the fight that they had. And, and you know, Candace was really upset about that. And she was thinking about pressing charges against Ooh. Monique. Mm-hmm. Yeah, from that fight. But it seems like Karen kind of suggested that Candace yeah. do that. So I'm like, wait a minute, Karen, you on team Candace or you on team Monique? Monique. I'm real confused. Yeah. yeah, I was real confused about that. So we'll see what's going to happen with that. Monique's husband, he was not not pleased with his wife's behavior. So he set up a meeting. It seems like Monique and her husband, they had a meeting with their pastor. Mm -hmm. And uh, the pastor just basically talked to Monique and told her that she has to figure out what's setting her off like that. Mm -hmm. Was it something from her childhood? You know, she can't take criticism. It just sets you off where you're just ready to fight. So she really needs to explore and find out, you know, was it something from my childhood? What's going on with her? Anyway, okay. back to Robin. So let me take you back to Robin. She's still over Candace's house telling her about what went down during the meeting. And then Candace doing all this crying. Then she looks at Robin and say, but what's this on the blogs about you owing the IRS $90,000? <laughs> I said, see, oh, that's, why. that's yes. why Monique jumped Monique on jumped, you. Yes. That's, that's exactly. <laughs> She's so wow, messy. Jay. That's so messy. <laughs> she is so messy. Uh-huh. Man. <laughs> You up there, this girl up here trying to talk to you and spill the tea about your Uh stuff, and then you up here throwing shade at her about how much (laughs) she owes to the IRS, $90,000. That's that's a lot of money. So, you know, Robin has talked about her financial problems in the past. Mm -hmm. So, you know, she knows that she has to get that together. So, you know, you can't play with them people about them taxes. You can't, I, I guess, you know, unless you're President Trump. And then you yeah, gonna, true. You I'm here to tell you you can't. Those are facts. Uh-huh. <laughs> Wait, excuse me, excuse me. I said me. Come I'm on here to here. tell you you can't. <laughs> Send them folks their damn money. Don't play with them people. <laughs> they have measures. Hey, they can call the bank and stop everything you do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And when you pay them, they'll wait 30 days to unfreeze it. Okay. So you get the lesson. 
<laughs> so Robin, if you're don't listening, mess with us. <laughs> to listen to Steve Harvey, they don't mess with the people. With you, they are not. Nope. And uh, that's pretty much it on Real Housewives of Potomac. Last week we talked about we congratulated Cynthia Bailey and Mike Hill. Oh, we yeah. all know our very own Steve Harvey introduced them. You know, he was the matchmaker, and they all got married. Ooh, I mean, they got married they this past together. weekend, so that was cool. What'd you say, Steve? Let's hope they stay together, because I damn sure don't want to get blamed for that. <laughs> <laughs> It's <laughs> <laughs> <is> so crazy. <laughs> and quickly, October, we know it's Breast Cancer Awareness Month this Saturday. Sister Strut, um, virtually, we're doing it with WDAS in Philly, mm-hmm. 1053. And also Detroit, Sister Strut, Detroit. We got you, Mix 92.3. What you got, Shirley? Uh, that's it. We'll be back with more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show and some trending stories coming up at 20 minutes after the hour, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. After decades recording music from Motown, Stevie Wonder just announced he'll be releasing new music on his very own label, Steve. It's called So What the Fuss Music. It'll be distributed by Republic Records. The name was inspired by his 2005 collaboration with Prince. Part of his new music era, Stevie released two new songs, Where Is Our Love Song and Proceeds from Where Is Our Love Song will go to Feeding America. Stevie Wonder has been releasing music through Motown and their affiliated labels since 1961. After being signed when he was just 11 years old, uh, proceeds from Where Is Our Love Song will go to Feeding America, as I oh, mentioned. Yeah, so congratulations. Yeah, what an icon. What a oh, legend. Stevie. Yeah. Legend. So I remember that song. So what the fuss? Took me yeah. a minute to figure out they were saying fuss. Though. Fuss. Because <laughs> you wanted it. Because you wanted yes, it to be you wanted them to be I, I was singing hard in it. <laughs> like what, Steve? <laughs> so what? <laughs> Steve, you changed the look. And, and when you found out it was fuss, you didn't want to sing it anymore. <laughs> About to give Stevie so much problems. WTF Records. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, I can't. I haven't heard the new song. Uh, Where is our love song? I can't wait to hear that. Yeah, they just sent it to me actually mm-hmm. uh, yesterday. So we will be playing it and supporting Stevie. All right. So cool. this is a here. big charity fundraiser. Yep, I'll give yeah. it to my man. Okay. All right. Thanks, Carla. Uh, Thanks, Steve. More of the Steve Harvey Morning Show and some trending news coming up at 33 minutes after the hour, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right. What is going on? In trending political news, First Lady Melania Trump revealed yesterday that her son, Barron, had COVID-19 without any symptoms. Uh, Remember, Mrs. Trump tested positive about two weeks ago, and it's being reported that Barron also tested positive around that time. However, the White House said publicly that Barron had tested negative for COVID-19. Remember that. That was another yes. lie, apparently. Another what one. What is going on, oh, oh, man? Yeah. Me... Barron <laughs> is over this whole experience. I bet you he threw with this White House. <laughs> he's, he's 14. I mean, yeah, he's a kid, you he's know? A kid. He's a kid, yeah. Yeah. Okay. This is this is just really something, and, and his father is still out, you know, being the super spread it, yeah. spreader, being the super spreader. Uh, uh, NBC News will hold a town hall event with President Trump uh, tonight in Miami. Uh, the one-hour event will be hosted by Today Show anchor Savannah Guthrie. Joe Biden is also holding a town hall event in Philadelphia on ABC. Um, and this is in lieu of the debate that was supposed to be, you know, mm-hmm. so they, they scratch that. Yeah. And uh, now they're just uh, doing, you know, their town hall meetings. Uh, also, Joe Biden I'm will get a boost from... I'm glad there's not another debate. Well, it's supposed well there's to be supposed to be three. There's the supposed to be another one. Yeah, there's yeah, supposed to be one about. more. Yeah. Also, Joe Biden will get a boost from former President Barack Obama, who is expected to hit the campaign trail soon in support of his former VP. Early voting has started in many states, as we've been talking about. Uh, It is only 19 days before the November 3rd election. So please, please go to vote.org to get all of your early voting information for your state. Okay, that's vote.org. 
Yeah. Mm. yeah. So we voted. Um, uh, uh, Tommy's voted. Carla's voted. I yes. voted. So yeah, yeah, we're 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 getting out there. We're doing it. So you guys, we want you guys to please vote as well, please. Mm. So yeah. most definitely, yeah. Go to vote.org. Find out when you can early vote. Take where a chair. Places. Yep. Take you yep. some bottles of water and just yep. ride it out. And a snack, yeah, and a snack. You know, I went I, to about three, I think three different locations. My husband and I, and we, mm-hmm. we found a location where we the line wasn't as long, so we mm-hmm, stood in line mm-hmm. about a hour and a half man but we mm-hmm. got in line got it done got our mask yeah felt good didn't it? it feels so it, it feels so good, good Tommy. yeah mm-hmm. and, and you know the so actual voting process oh i'm sorry oh, go ahead Steve. no i'm just saying you have a choice with where you can vote they don't have it where you have to vote on, in a certain on the district. Yeah. well you have a choice you in the county yeah in in early voting Oh, it man. was a choice. You could go within, as long as you're within the county, you can pick oh, okay. the uh, okay. different polling locations and just show up with your ID and your voter registration card. You know, you don't want no stuff. Coming up, it's our last break of the day. The last break of the day. And we'll have some closing remarks from the one and only Steve Harvey <laughs> at 49 minutes after, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, 19 days left until November 3rd. That is Election Day 2020. Uh, Go to vote.org and get all of your information for early voting in your state. That is vote.org. We want you to vote early, vote early, vote early, please. Yeah. Right, Steve? Yeah. Yeah, We We all voted. Yeah, we did. Yeah. We voted, baby. Got to do it. I'm the only one that ain't voted. Uh Uh-uh. I ain't voted yet. I'm voting Friday. Oh, okay. So, yeah. So, you know. Mm-hmm. So, three of us. We got yeah, two more. I had more. to straighten out some mess with my registration. They tried to play me, but I caught them, though. Oh, good. No. No. Oh, yeah. oh, I it, caught them. It, yeah. To play I'm, me. I'm glad you did. No, I, I don't not, know why no, they make I'm it so voting. hard. Y'all to not vote. finna trick me with that mess right there. Stop doing that, please. Miss Harvey, so your signatures hard. don't match up. Who's due? <laughs> <laughs> we, we can have Wait access a minute, to they everything. Said that? Yeah, Mr. Harvey, oh, your signatures, wow. uh, sir, sir. Mm-hmm. My name can mm-hmm. be written on. You know, I'm left-handed. I write. Different yeah, I am too. Yeah. The carpet tunnel set in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Man, I don't know <laughs> damn what you're talking about. <laughs> Whatever, you yeah. From? Well, it came you? from you. Well, okay, that's what it is. <laughs> Voter suppression is real. It is real. I mean, they're trying everything. But I, I, I am happy it to say that. It was peaceful where I was. I was yeah, very was much so. And I did see a lot of black men out in line voting. Yeah, I did see that. I was happy to see that. You know, you always see black women and and, and, uh, older people, but I was happy to see, you know, young black men. And yeah, we got to do it. But I saw older people, they they could pull up and and vote from their car. That was pretty Uh cool. In in Texas. I saw that on the news. I saw a place that did have a drive through uh, yeah. place. I did That's see awesome. That. I, wish, I wish everybody, I wish we had one uniform way of voting yes. in the entire country. Yeah. That Listen, would be everybody awesome. may not have that, y'all. Be prepared to go and vote. Yeah. Yes, yeah. stand in line. Yeah. Just, be prepared. Yeah. Yeah. Just make a yeah. plan. You got a plan. I can this. tell you right now, there are no special privileges to vote. So They're not trying to help no. you vote. No. <laughs> no, you're right. This, this is such an important election. Mm-hmm. And because what makes this election so important is for the first time in my lifetime that the opponent, one of the opponents, is openly and blatantly racist. I, 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 you know, I used to say a few years ago, I said, the problem with Donald Trump is he doesn't know he's racist. And I was saying that because I was saying in his world and circle that he uh, uh, moves around in, their trained way of thinking from birth is written off as this is just the way it is and they don't see it as racism. And I was correct in that. But the longer he stayed in office, the more I found it hard to believe that he was saying and thinking these things out loud, realizing what people were saying, and he was making the statements anyway. But it got real obvious during the debate 
when they asked him to denounce white supremacy, the Proud Boys, and he wouldn't do it. He wouldn't do it. And I'm going to tell you something, y'all. That's really the reason why they're avoiding these next debates. Because they know that they're going to pry and dig back at those same topics. And he still don't have an answer for them. The reason they don't want Donald Trump debating a second and a third time is because he can't debate. Because he can't deal with anybody confronting him or debating him. He doesn't know how to do that. He, he's a loose cannon. But this man that's in office right now blatantly, blatantly goes about the business in a racist way and he don't care how you feel about it. Black people, listen to me. People of color, brown, listen to me. Every cause that Donald Trump tapes up, takes up has something to do with the person of color. When he's made his first jump on Colin Kaepernick, is because Colin Kaepernick was a black person. When he jumped on the kneeling of the NFL players was because they were black people. When he wanted to make the wall an issue, it was because they are brown people. When he destroyed DACA, it was because of brown people. The reason he has never said Breonna Taylor's name is because she is a black person. The reason he ain't mentioned George Floyd, Aubrey, the reason he's never addressed that is because those are black people. The reason he put the ban on travel in America in Muslim countries because those people are all people of color. This man does not play with anything except the issues that concern people of colors and he pits white people against black people and people of color with this fear rhetoric that he constantly puts out. The fact that he will not denounce white supremacy says volumes about him. We can ill afford to sit here and let this man have another four years of raising up the ire of all these hate groups thinking that they got a man in the White House. And the only reason they keep thinking they got a man in the White House is because they know they got one in the White House. We have got to do something about this. Every cause he has is against a person of color. So we need everybody that has color on them to get to the polls and let him know we ain't having this no more, partner. Black Lives Matter, he ain't even mentioned it. You know why? Because they don't to him. He got to go. We got to vote. For all Steve Harvey contests, no purchase necessary, void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 